What's going on there guys? Good morning. Good afternoon actually. It is the Earth Master here. Um, on this beautiful Monday, it is the start of the work week, April 18, 2022, about 1.05 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.4 over here around the Mediterranean where we've been seeing a little swarm of activity here in the last 24 hours in that region. Let's go ahead and check out the latest movement here on the USGS map showing some of the activity, but not all of it because this is the 4.0 and above map here from the USGS, but it's right around the uh, Crete area. Getting a couple of threes and fours in this region. The EMSC model showing quite a bit of movement in this area. Let's go ahead and check out the EMSC model real quick. Stand by for just a second. I thought I had that pulled up um, and we'll see what's going on over here around the Crete region. <clears throat> so there's that swarm of activity here. Uh, quite a few threes and twos that I mentioned here. Looking at the chart, you can see these uh, earthquakes there around the Crete, Greece area. And there's quite a number of them. Uh, I think so far the largest one so far has been that 4.2 uh, about 10 hours ago. So a little bit of swarming going on in the area of the Mediterranean in the Crete area. <clears throat> Alright, what else we got going on here? West Coast starting to light up a little bit here with a 2.5 map and look at that. Some earthquake activity, right? Scattered mostly into Northern California and Central California it looks like. We did have an earthquake up here in the uh, area of Northern California, 2.5. This one's pretty shallow. It's a 2.8 depth for a 2.5 uh, earthquake here. It's kind of a pretty shallow movement quake. Uh, a little bit further out to sea, had a 2.8 at 3.9 uh, kilometers below the surface. So some shallow movement taking place here in Northern California. Uh, we have been seeing quite a bit of deep activity here over the past few months in the area of the Cascadia. Uh, this one here is pretty deep, 16 kilometers for a 1.8 and way out here in the Gorda Ridges. Uh, fairly deep one as well, 2.2 at 23 kilometers. So a little bit of movement going on off the coast and inland in the Northern California. Uh, activity into the Ridgecrest area, still showing a little bit of heightened activity. Just east of the Ridgecrest region, north of the Garlock Fault Zone. Quite a few ones and some smaller quakes kicking off in that swarm of activity. Also, if you look down here, a little bit of movement on an area where we haven't seen uh, too much in terms of uh, recent microquake activity. Out here on the North American side of the plate boundary, right on the opposite side here of the uh, San Andreas Fault. This is the southern segment that uh, no doubt will bring a devastating earthquake to California one day, I'm sure. It's been a long, long time since we've seen any release of pressure on this southern segment. So, a little bit of activity here, lighten up within the last hour, nothing big, a 1.2 and a 0.9, uh, but the activity is there, so we got to watch that pretty closely. Uh, looking up through the Intermountain West region, some movement through Utah and into southern Idaho. Getting a little swarm of movement here near the Georgetown, Idaho area. Uh, definitely some fault systems out here. I know there's more than that. There's just USGS only showing a handful of uh, fault systems out here on this map. But uh, kind of looks like it's there in that little valley. Uh, looks like Lake Valley north of there. Uh, into the region of Georgetown Summit. Uh, somewhat shallow movement. We did have one deep earthquake here, 15 kilometers for 1.4, but the uh, majority of it, a uh, pretty, a little bit of shallow activity. 2.1, the largest in that little cluster of quakes. So movement out in uh, northern Idaho looks like as well, around the Sawtooth Fault Zone. And areas around Yellowstone. I do want to look up Yellowstone real quick, see what we got cooking over here along the... Uh, Super Volcano, there's not a whole lot showing up locally in terms of earthquake activity here in the uh, Yellowstone region. A little bit of movement looks like up here towards the eastern side of the park. Uh, Parker Peak area looks like a little bit of movement here. And then again, this doesn't even look like it's uh, all that localized. It looks like it's kind of distant again. We've seen this happen a... Uh, few days ago, but I'm not certain where this activity is uh, hitting at, far as the epicenter region goes. These don't look like localized quakes here, uh, just, due on, uh, just on those seismographs I'm looking at. 
but uh, not a whole lot shown up here on the eastern side of Yellowstone National Park so uh, still a little uncertain where that activity is occurring but uh, aside from the uh, aside from those sign signals uh, and signatures not a whole lot going on there in Yellowstone today uh, what's going on out here in the Oklahoma area a little bit of movement not going on Texas is kind of coming going with the activity down there in the Pecos Texas area kind of kind of does that today though a pretty good quiet spell down there in that region some earthquake activity around the Piedmont Oklahoma region uh, Perry Oklahoma as well uh, I'm not for sure if we got any uh, uh, gas and oil fields West oil field uh, let's see what we got for satellite views here quite a yeah. yeah it looks like there might hard to tell in this in this map I mean it shows oil filled maps on the uh, on the map itself here so could be some uh, operation uh, induced earthquakes I do want to bring up an article real quick because a lot of people kind of downplaying the uh, the oil field operations um, that uh, take place out there all throughout Oklahoma Kansas uh, Texas area even out here in California uh, you know of course West Texas as well I mentioned the Pecos Texas area uh, quite a few earthquakes there uh, here's a little article just from 2020 so a couple a couple years has passed um, the title of this says oil field operations likely triggered earthquakes in California a few miles from the San Andreas Fault. Uh, so the way companies drill for oil and gas and dispose of the wastewater can trigger earthquakes at times in unexpected places. Uh, for example, there in the uh, West Texas area. That's, that's down there in the Pecos, Texas area, right? Let's go ahead and show you guys real quick. Back out of here. We'll have to go to the... Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and do the uh, last 30 days of activity. And you'll see the amount of activity kicking up here. There's a lot of uh, old, older uh, oil operations out there. So these, you know, just because you're creating a, a weak spot in the crust by these new operations, you know, the newer ones uh, throughout parts of Central Texas and Oklahoma, it takes a little while for those possibly to collapse uh, and uh, create those earthquakes. But here on this map, 208 earthquakes there in the area of Pecos, Texas. Okay, remember that. Uh, in West Texas, earthquake rates are now 30 times higher than they were in 2013. Studies have also linked earthquakes to oil field operations in Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, and Ohio. Uh, California was thought to be an exception, a place where oil field operations and tectonic faults apparently coexisted without much of a problem. Now, new research shows that the state's natural earthquake activity may be hiding industry-induced quakes. Uh, as a seismologist, I have been investigating induced earthquakes in the U.S., Europe, and Australia. Uh, there's a little study there as well. Uh, Industry-induced earthquakes have been increasing concern in the central and eastern United States for more than a decade. Most of these earthquakes are too small to be felt, but not all of them. In 2016, a magnitude 5.8 earthquake damaged buildings in the Pawnee, Oklahoma area and led state and federal uh, regulators to shut down 32 wastewater disposal wells uh, near a newly discovered fault. Large earthquakes are rare, far from tectonic plate boundaries, and Oklahoma experiencing three magnitude 5 or greater earthquakes in one year, as it happened in 2016, was unheard of. So this little chart here kind of shows you um, the surge in earthquake activity out there. Oklahoma wasn't known for earthquakes before the fracking boom started around 2010. Uh, restrictions on wastewater injection wells helped lower the annual number of earthquakes, uh, but they're still above a uh, magnitude 2.5 each each year than in the early 2000s. So we're we're always seeing earthquake activity out here uh, in the Oklahoma area. That's a given as well uh, throughout all of the uh, um, oil and gas field areas up here in Enid region. I mean, they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. And, if, you know, you don't have to pull out too far to see them all. They're scattered about the land, these little squares. Some of them may be out of business. Some may be in operation. Uh, but those are not farmhouses sitting out there, uh, out there in the, in the uh, prairies of Oklahoma. Those are a lot of oil field operations. So 
you know, just someone was kind of doubting the uh, activity, and there's always a lot of naysayers, and no, oh, it doesn't happen. And there is, there's fault systems out there in Oklahoma, no doubt, right? You got the Wichita Mountains over there to the west, and uh, some other areas throughout Texas, Guadalupe Peak, but uh, it's it's um, without a doubt uh, linked to the uh, fracking operations, the oil uh, and pumping operations there. Um, and that's that's a fact. I could go on and on with article after article and studies after studies, but we're not going to do that. Just wanted to bring up one. I'll leave this this link here um, with to, with the um, update video, uh, and you guys can check it out yourself. Here, earthquakes were rare in West Texas before the hydraulic fracking boom. The chart shows the number of earthquakes above magnitude 2.5 between 2005 and 2020. So, yeah, be yeah, 200 earthquakes or more, and we just seen that. That's 2020, right? Look, look in the last, just look in the last 30 days. Ready? Remember that number? 218 in 30 days. So the frequency uh, and the multitude of quakes have skyrocketed. I don't even know if that's the word I can use, skyrocketed. Um, but yeah. All right, folks, moving on past that. I try not to um, bring that up too much about the fracking and whatnot but if there is an earthquake over a region i do like to zoom in check it out see what kind of uh maybe faults are out there but then again every it seems like every time i check out these earthquakes up close there's those operations gas and well operations around so there's just one of thousands of articles and studies on that uh puerto rico what do we got only nine earthquakes here not a whole lot going on around the southwestern edge of puerto rico nine not a whole lot folks a little bit of activity off the coast of Mexico and inland. A couple fours kicking off here into the Middle America Trench. About 42 kilometers for that 4.4. South America has gone absolutely silent, silent, <laughs> silent in terms of 4.0 and above. Uh, I'm sure there's threes and twos going on down there, but the USGS not showing any of that at the moment. As uh, far as 4.0 and above goes. Hawaii, all magnitudes map, only 11 earthquakes here on the southeast flank. Nothing really popping off too much there. On the Big Island, if you notice Fiji, Kermadec Trench, uh, Tonga Trench, all pretty quiet here, folks. Northern, northwestern part of the uh, Pacific Plate here as well. Kind of getting a bunched up clutter of quakes here in the Philippines area and Taiwan, south of Taiwan. Quite a few fours and fives bunched up in this region. A couple areas to watch when we see these type of dynamics is the trenches. Uh, you got the Java Trench over here to the southwest. And of course you got uh, the Philippine Plate here, Philippine Trench. This area uh, has been seeing some movement as well. Um, so you got to watch this area. When we see a large cluster of quakes like this in a in a uh, pretty dynamic region, you got to watch these little these regions, this little trench area. Java Trench, Philippine Trench, there's a couple other, they're surrounded by trenches everywhere. So you got to watch those. Um, so aside from the middle uh, Mediterranean Sea region, India, China, all look pretty quiet over here. Uh, we did have one earthquake way down here in the South Sandwich Islands. Can't leave them out. 67.7 kilometer depth for a 4.9 that struck uh, earlier uh, or late last night, I should say, in that region. Uh, trimmer map from last night, I believe, was quiet. Although, well, look at that. They, it looks like they added some on there. Maybe they're on with it. Maybe they're, maybe they're on with getting on with the show here. 42 epicenters of trimmer into the Northern California region. That was on the 17th, so that's going to be yesterday. Uh, the 16th to see if they've added anything on. Yes, they have. They've actually increased the multitude of quakes or the uh, trimmers. Uh, we looked at this on the 16th and i don't believe it showed anything but i think we checked it out yesterday we've been checking out the days prior because they've been adding them days late weeks late sometimes uh when it comes to the amount of trimmer so that's a pretty good uh, number there 123 and that's kind of up there around the seattle area as well let's check the 15th and then it starts to go down a little bit but uh it's good to see that they're at least including them i don't know if that's all of them or not but hey they're at least showing them up here on the map, right? Uh, let's go ahead and check out the solar weather activity as we're looking at this massive sunspot kind of rot rotate in the view. Got uh, a former 2975, now named 2994. 
I don't know if he's happy about that. Going to be popping off quite a few flares here, no doubt. Uh, 2993 included in this massive sunspot region, uh, and that will be rotating into view. Current uh, solar flare detection shows uh, a large number of C flares popping off here over the last 12 hours. We did have another M flare uh, late last night, and also earlier this morning had a, uh, another M flare. So this thing's starting to ramp up. We're starting to see that snap, crackle, and pop type of feature. Uh, before we see a major flare happen. Uh, we've got to watch that pretty closely here. Let me check the uh, one day. I'm watching this over the last few minutes here as we're getting that, uh, well, we had that M flare kick up. A little bit of downtrend, but now we're getting, we're going back up there. And all it takes is a pretty good spike, uh, pretty good flare, instable, unstable uh, conditions there with the magnetic field, and it could pop off. See what this looks like right here. Looks pretty impressive. I, I really like to see this thing rotate in the view so we can get a better view of it. There's 2994 and 2993. That is going to be a huge, it's already huge, but massive sunspot when that rotates in the view. Getting some uh, radio blackouts here around the uh, Middle America Trench there, Mexico, and off into the Pacific here, west coast of the United States included in that. But uh, yeah, I gotta, gotta watch that pretty closely here, folks. Uh, let's see what these guys are forecasting. 25% chance of an X flare. Uh, I think that's probably a little bit higher, but we'll we'll see. At least it's not. Um, they're not uh, saying only 5% chance. Sometimes it takes them a little while to update this site. But uh, C flare almost with certainty because it's continuously producing C flares and M flares. We've seen that as well. Uh, the M4.4 looks as though it was this one last night here. Haven't reported this one, it looks like. That's uh, into the uh, M flare R1 storm, radiation storm. And uh, it will be interesting, no doubt, to see how this develops in the coming days, folks. Just be on guard, be prepared. You never know. I mean, we start getting these massive flares, and we can have all sorts of uh, issues with our GPS systems, our navigation systems. You know, power grid. Uh, who knows what else? We're all super dependent on electronics. I know I am here to run the channel. I got to have internet, right? Um, and, and of course, the computer and electrical uh, outlet. Look at all that buildup here in this region. That's a lot of activity. So uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, the best we can do is just be prepared and uh, go with the flow. Go with the show, right? Should be a very interesting. Uh, um, solar maximum that's for sure all right guys have a good day we will chat you guys a little bit later on this evening with the update video uh, unless something major pops off then we'll definitely jump in here and uh, do an update all right guys take care